So I'm going to invite Stephen Allman up first to introduce his panel. Stephen. And uh, I'll just let you introduce uh, your panelist. How about that? Well, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. He's going to let them introduce themselves. Wow. So why am I up here then, right? This is probably what you're asking right about now. No, no. You, you can have the mic. Okay, there thanks. you go. Uh, good afternoon. I, I do appreciate uh, Dave letting us be a nimble organization here and we did shift some things around so uh, I've been teasing Dave a little bit about the age factor but that was a very quick decision so it just shows the brain still working so it's okay. At 52 you're good. So, so I'm going to invite the panelists up and I'm actually going to let them introduce themselves. None of this is rehearsed but it's just a little bit easier so Matthias, Dania and uh, Felipe. We had a big debate about the, the chairs or the table and the table one. So I'll let you guys sit over here for a second. So while they're getting themselves settled, uh, I'm going to just kind of establish a couple little ground rules, housekeeping notes for everybody. Um, one of the great things about this panel is that it's kind of the continuation of some stuff that's been going on, the last retreat, and a bunch of information that's been happening in discussions for the last year, year and a half. So anytime you can have that as part of your discussion, I think that's great. Um, please do not be afraid to uh, put up your hand and ask a question. Uh, please do not be afraid to ask a question that you think is challenging. Uh, test the panel a little bit. We want to get a little bit of uh, discussion going on. Um, there, there's probably going to be some documentation and information coming out afterwards and I'll let Dave talk a little bit about that at the end. Uh, but I'm thrilled to be here. I was very honored to be asked to uh, moderate. And so what I'm going to do is ask the panelists to quickly in introduce themselves. I'll start off with a question. Hopefully I'm not just the only one asking questions. Um, but I will uh, start off with one and then away we go. So please. Uh Thank you. So my name is Felipe Papaleo. I'm the VP for Developing Technologies for Income Canada. And uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of the panel again. For the ones who were not on the previous event, uh, we were there. So. Um, my name is Dania Ruiz Paramo and I'm with First Data. I am a um, product specialist, meaning that I specialize in all things prepaid. The Canadian market is um, a, the greater part of my portfolio, so happy to be here as well. Hi, my name is Matias. Um, I'm from Biotech, which many of you already know. I've um, been as part of the founding team and vice president of the, co the company. I'm happy to be on the panel and talk all things digital. So part of the reason why I didn't want to do the introductions because I was sure I was going to butcher the name. So I was really uh, appreciative of everybody doing that. Um, so again, we had a little bit of a chat below. And, and one of the things that comes out, and again, I was at a couple of Dave's, uh, sorry, a of the payment exchange retreat and a couple of the conferences and there's recurring themes that happen. This topic about digital and, and the digitization of the industry seems to be one that's been really key. So I, I just starting with Felipe I think, just help us understand a little bit the last 12 months, we'll use 12 months as a baseline, sort of what are the big changes that you've seen, what are some of the things that are impacting the business, how does it impact your company and where do you see some of these things going? Yeah, sure. Um, so, if we, I think that we have to talk about uh, digital, the de digital delivery of uh, products in uh, four ways. If uh, we were talking five years ago, we will be talking about transaction. So, how we're going to process the data, how we're going to transact the data. A year ago, we'll be talking about deployment, how we're going to make things go to. Uh, are we going to send an email? Are we going to send a text message? Is it going to be on a, on a mobile device? Is it going to be um, uh, a barcode? Is it going to be what? Um, right now, I believe that we are at the redemption mode. How we are going to re redeem these cards that are going to come. And together with all of that is how we are going to then use the data that, that we're collecting, everything that we're gathering, uh, how we're going to connect that? How we're going to aggregate that? All of that. So, from the past 12 months to now, I believe that the industry have made some significant moves, especially in Canada, in terms of providing a platform for delivery to operate. Uh, digital delivery was always something that has been there. Doing an e-certificate and, and sending that 
and the certificate being a gift card on a phone, be that financial or non-financial. Doing that and sending that via an email, it's not news. Doing that and putting that on a phone, it's not news. Uh, making that work, that's news. Making the redemption work, that's news. So, as I said, I believe that we were past the uh, transaction, and, and forgive me by saying past, because that's not to put that lightly. There's still a significant amount of work that has to go there. But I think that we know already what that is. We know already how the deployments are going to happen. It's the redemption right now, at least in Canada, that is something that is a bit of a challenge. You are going to deploy an, a card via a digital via digital means, and that how are you going to redeem that at the point of sale? Are you going to use NFC for proximity payment? You have some limitations there. Are you going to use a barcode? You have some limitations there from the retailer side. Is the, is the POS ready to read a barcode? Is the POS ready to uh, read a barcode from a phone? Um, and after all of that, how do you deal with people just talking, you were late to the game? Because no matter how many conventions, how many events we go, you leave always feeling that you are late to the game. Let me put it this way, nobody's late to the game on this. Uh, I still don't think that there is a solution that is ready and proven out there. We have made significant strides, but it's, there's not a solution. So just going back to your original question, what has changed from 12 months from, from now? We now have a platform. It has been launched in Canada. It's called SureTap. It's, uh, it, it's a step on the right direction in terms of consolidating transaction and deployment for digital assets. Redemption now is going to be the next big uh, thing. Not rocket science, not complicated by any stretch of the imagination, just another step that needs to overcome. I don't want to take too much time, but no, that's, uh, I that's, hope that that's I fine. have. And, uh, Daniel, from your standpoint, for, for first data and you know, I think we talked a little bit before, you're a lot of things to the industry and a lot right. of delivery, but from your perspective, I'll also be interested a little bit on the U.S.-Canadian perspective. Sure, absolutely. So our perspective is a little unique in that we sit behind the scenes and kind of see a little bit of everything that's happening in the industry. I think from my perspective, the biggest change that we've seen within the last 12 months is that everybody has some sort of digital strategy and you really fit into two buckets you're either still in the process of doing the research um, and identifying what that broader term strategy is going to be for you and your brand and your customers or you're well down the path of executing uh, on that digital strategy um, we're unique in that we're here to help your business grow so we really play matchmaker in a lot of sense where um, from a consultation standpoint we really ask well what are the objectives of your of your company of your brand what are you really trying to do what are some of those obstacles and you touched on one redemption is a big obstacle for some folks whether in the US or Canada um, but I think that that's been the the biggest difference within the last 12 months is that everybody's talking digital um, some of the latest research that we've done um, internally shows that there you're leaving market share by not being in that space that space is still growing significantly in some in some verticals um, and by not being present in those verticals you're sacrificing market share likely to your to your um, competitors so we're um, big advocates in helping our merchants really identify and um, deploy the solution that's going to be a best fit for them and Matthias, is it is that those changes that we're hearing are they being driven by the businesses, by the consumers, or by the vendors? Like like where's that energy coming from? I think I think it's coming from a bit of everywhere. Um, at the end of the day, consumers are going to use digital cards if when you buy it's a nice experience, if when you receive it's a nice experience, and when you use it's a good experience. And Felipe had touched on the redemption piece. Um, that's the key piece, and it seems to be the, the, the toughest piece for sure, um, because there's you know old hardware systems in place, and you know, ideally the user walks in and scans or you know taps, um, and that's where everyone wants to get to. Um, but yeah, so the, the adoption 
adoption is, is definitely happening. Um, if you looked at the adoption rates of digital cards five years ago, um, without anything else being different, there's programs that are just exponentially selling more digital cards. And I think to Daniel's point, um, that just shows you that c people that aren't doing digital um, are leaving, um, I guess, leaving it on the table in, in that uh, perspective. Um, when we meet with new clients, we usually say, hey, what does your, tra your volume traffic look like on December 24th? Right? And they say, well, there's a spike here. So, okay, well, why do you think that spike is? Like, do you think they were looking for location? Like, or do you think maybe they're looking for gift cards? Right? So, in that sense, um, if they do go to your website or they are looking for a digital card um, and they can't get it, um, the risk of obviously get, getting it somewhere else is, is apparent. Um, but that being said, I can see why some brands have been on the sidelines um, because you want that experience to be perfect. Um, and, and maybe that is a hardware update that's coming in the future um, and just waiting until then. Um, but it, it's exciting. I mean, we're seeing. Uh, digital activate a lot more cards than it did in the beginning and um, that's just the market telling everyone that digital is, is kind of here and it's it's something that consu uh, consumers want more and more. And, and from your corporate perspectives, what are some of the big challenges and risks that apply both for your business but also for the industry? Because I think that might lead us down a path of some, hopefully some audience questions. I think you guys are all out there. So. From a corporate perspective? Yeah. So for a company like ours, so for a company like Income, uh, the biggest challenge that we probably face is we got to build and somebody's going to come. So we have to build the solutions, we got to build infrastructure, we got to build a platform, and that's why I talk about uh, SureTap and why that's, uh, that's what we believe or we hope is going to be as revolutionary as we think it's going to be, but uh, because we got to build it and somebody's going to come. And because at the end of the day, there is no silver bullet, and I said that before, I'm going to say it again, there is no silver bullet for digital de de delivery. What works for this merchant might not work for the other merchant. What worked for one brand might not work for another brand. And um, Matthias was talking about uh, what happened on uh, December 24th. So last year, we did, a, we did a research and asked consumers, what is your expectation regarding physical or digital cards. 87% said that uh, it doesn't matter. They just want to have the convenience of buying one or the other. So it's not that one that digital is going to replace physical, at least not in the short term, at least not when everybody is playing nice on the sandbox. Everybody, the technology is there. Everybody is, it, it, it's on the sandbox, but people are not playing nice. Perhaps you know how uh, you bring a new kid to a playground and the kids are looking at each other with a grumpy face for five minutes and then they are best friends. Perhaps what's happening. And um, so for us is we got to build before. There is no, for a company like Income, there is no ROI yet for us. That's for our clients. But for us, we got to build and then uh, and then make it available to to folks to use. Um, from a first data perspective, we've really seen um, three different types of integrations. We have those merchants that are very focused on their brand. They want to own the brand experience. And for that perspective, they just want us to help enable the transaction, which, which we obviously do. Then there are those that are in the middle ground, where they're saying, yes, we want to own our consumer experience, but we want you not only to just enable the stored value transaction, but we also want you to um, perhaps enable the, the gift, uh, the credit card processing of that, and perhaps also take on the risk associated with having transactions perform online. Then we have those that just kind of want to hit the ground running. They know that from an IT perspective, they don't have the resources to do um, some of the cool features that we're starting to see with a lot of the players in this industry. And they say, we want you to do it all. Just give me a URL to redirect to, and, and that's what we want. So to Philippe's point, there really is no one size fits all, because even, even with those three predominant integration types, you're going to see the little nuances here and there um, throughout. Uh, I mean, and, and it's easy to identify who is who. I think for those that haven't um, gone out and done something today, um, the, the fast adopters, they've already had all the hard lessons. I think for most of those folks, it's time to get off the bench and, and start gaming back that market share you're losing. 
or leaving on the table more likely. Yeah. I'm trying to think about analogies for the playground equipment, which I'll come back to in a second. <laughs> um, just, just a question for you. If you look at the title, there's a, the digital gifting and payments. Is that the same for both sides of the business? Gifting and payments, do you look at them separately? Do you look at it as one? Because as a consumer, I think of them as different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody? Are you uh, yeah, anybody? Yeah. Whoever, just yeah. jump in. Don't no no formality. You well, know, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. but don't fight. Yeah. We're gonna do the mock that was up here earlier. No, am I on mute? No. <laughs> um, honestly, for us in particular, transactions a transaction, right? Which is our core, our bread and our butter. So um, I think from a first data perspective. Um, might be very different for, for what you would get from these two gentlemen here. But for us in particular, um, they're one and the same. It takes the same type of security and infrastructure, we believe, to enable a coupon or a loyalty transaction than it does to process a credit card payment. There really is no segregation or discriminating because um, a transaction's a transaction and in our book everything has to be secure. I think from, from that perspective, though, for, for the merchants at least, it gives them the opportunity to, to brand that experience. Whereas if they're using their credit card, um, their Visa or their MasterCard, um, but now you're using one of their cards, and if it's a, if it's a gift card, um, and they were able to have it added to a mobile wallet like or Apple Passbook, and it's got their brand, it's got their brand tied to that, and then when they go to pay and they use that, um, I think they're... It's it, it's it's similar, but it's it's different in the sense that you can you can be more more in in front of the consumer on the gift card transactions than you can on the other ones, um, and that's where we like to really help and make sure that's it's branded and as you know positioned like the merchants want. And, and, and I think it's important to make a distinction between gift and uh, for us again, a transaction is a transaction, but at the, but at the end of the day, if you have gift and you have payments, and by payments, I'm just going to use that as being for self-use. So I'm going to buy something for myself or I'm going to buy something for somebody else. And I think that that's a big distinction. For income, it's just on the strategy that you're going to help your client put together. If somebody is putting a product out there for digital de de delivery and that being mobile, and I'm sorry for talking about the mobile piece so much, but this is what the buzz, this is what the buzz is, right? But uh, on, especially on, on the mobile side, if, if you are going to talk about self-use, that's the channel that you are going to go for. People are going to buy stuff on a mobile phone, most likely for self-use. I uh, do I have data that back that up? Some uh, research that we have done. It is a lot of my gut feeling, yes, because I don't see myself buying a Gap. No offense to Gap, it's a great partner. <laughs> but I don't see myself buying a Gap gift card for myself on my phone and then going to the store to redeem that. You know, you know what I mean? It doesn't make much sense. Or buy something to gift from the phone. I would gift something that somebody could use on the phone. So I would give a content, I would give the Google Play, iTunes, I would give that, that somebody can use it on the phone. That's why our focus is more on content delivery via phone. Now, if somebody's gonna do digital, restaurants are great, uh, coffee chains are great, um, for phone and for just uh, uh, redemption at, at there, like you print a voucher or something like that. Uh, so I think, I think it depends. It's very important to make the distinction because for one brand, for one merchant, you might have three different strategies depending on the channel you want the delivery to be and which redemption you're going to use. Um, again, it's not complicated by any stretch of the imagination. It's just aligning technologies and solutions to what your end result is. So there's a lot of talking before do you deploy something? That's why I keep saying there's no silver bullet for that. And I think a key piece to add there is the mobile first mentality, right? I think a lot of brands, when they think digital, they think desktop, right? And they think, let's build it, you know, let's, what does it look like on desktop? Um, when someone buys someone a gift card and they email it to someone or they text it to someone, they're going to see that on their phone. Right, so the whole idea is, is you, you want to position it so it's mobile first. Um, if you're designing what your card's going to look like, or you're designing the emails or the language, um, just think, let's just do it on mobile first, and then let's build that, 
to work on desktop, right? And I think um, the data is in, right? And we're seeing that, that so many people are using mobile as the redemption piece. Um, so that's just a key piece, and I think adds nicely to what Felipe is saying. So what do you guys see as the biggest risk in the business? I mean, if you think about certain sectors, I mean, we talked to the legal presentation about privacy and government control and, and starting to do things. What's, what's, from your perspective, again, as industry experts or from your company's perspective, what are the biggest risks? What are the sort of torpedoes that are in the water coming at you that you, you know are there? And I wish I could predict the ones that you don't know about, but uh, what are some of the risks that you guys see? Um, from a first data perspective, there's really been two risks that our merchants have really highlighted um, as a big concern. First one obviously being fraud. Um, fraudsters are brave. They're brave in person. They're that much braver when it comes to this unknown space, cyber, mobile, whatever the case may be. Um, so, uh, you know, and we've had merchants that have been, um, you know, severely impacted because of fraud. We had a um, utilities company in the U.S. that had over 75% fraud um, when they launched their online presence. So, I mean, it's a real concern. It's a real factor. I think the other one um, is this treatment. Um, once you start moving into that dig digital space, and to both of these gentlemen's point, digital, because it crosses over so many paths, it's not just online, it's mobile, it's social media. It just starts to grow into much more than just what, what in the beginning phases was just online or, or web transacting. Um, so from an achievement standpoint, we have consumers that based on the states that they're incorporated, obviously this is in, in, in the US and not so much in Canada yet, um, their concerns are once you start to know who the consumer is, the laws that they are uh, using to regulate their entire program start to go away because you start to know who yeah. who that a consumer is either buying or receiving and and once you start to muddy the waters um, it starts to financially impact their breakage and what they're able to keep and or turn around and invest in their program so from our perspective, I would say those are the two biggest concerns that have been highlighted. And, and to, to Daniel's point, like those are key, key, key points. Um, those are the exact two that came to my mind. Um, fraud is is huge, and uh, people, if you give someone the opportunity to buy a digital product and mass, and it's not being physically mailed somewhere, um, you're attracting people with, to use other people's credit card numbers. Um, there's tools and there's partners in place that, that can definitely help. Um, on the achievement one, um, the achievement one is, 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 is one I, I feel like fraud, people are starting to see that's a real risk. Um, on the achievement side, um, that's a, another big piece that I, I think merchants are, are just now starting to realize that digital is different when it comes to achievement. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, if you sell someone a physical gift card for cash, then you don't know anything about that customer, even if they swipe a credit card. But if you sell someone a gift card online and you take their credit card information, you've taken their billing info. And if they're out of New Jersey or you know, what, 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 one of the other achievement states, um, you are you do arguably know that consumer and you know where they reside and you are subject to their achievement laws. Now, if you're in Canada and you do a little bit of business in the U.S., um, it, it, it might not impact you. Um, but if you do a significant amount of business in the U.S. Um, and you're selling cards to people in those achievement states, um, you are putting yourself at risk because you are knowing those customers. Um, there's, there's ways around it, but um, it is something to definitely take into consideration. And, and I think it is uh, a big piece of the, the risk piece of selling products online. Felipe, I'll, I'll let you, and then I'm going to turn it over to the audience because I can see them itching to get some questions out. So, so in, in terms, so yeah, fraud, yes, it's a big concern everywhere. But I just want to turn the risk again, uh, just turn the risk into the business side. And I think that one of the biggest risks we have, at least as a company, when we are doing business, and then this goes for us and for our clients as well, is when you are engaging in conversations regarding digital and mobile, you, you deploy the resources to find a solution. You deploy the time. You, you go there six months later. And there is no clear vision still on the solution. There is a big risk of losing time and money from both sides when you're doing that. It's, it's not uncommon, and perhaps folks in the audience have gone through that too, that you go through the path of, I'm going to find a solution for digital. Six months later, you are frustrated because you haven't felt that you achieved there. 
you are trying to find an ROI, you are trying to find something and it's not there. There is a big risk in there, there's a big um, commitment risk, engagement risk. Um, I'm trying to find a better word for that, but I can't. And if I will, then I will tell you what we'll be here for another languages. 15 minutes. We're good. So. Sorry, just one last piece, though. Not it's it's not the point isn't to scare everyone. Like there's partners of ours that you know that uh, have great programs. And they sell a ton of gift cards. It's if just if you just think through these things and you make sure you're you're properly protected for achievement, properly protected for fraud. Um, you're in a position to market your gift cards, sell them to everybody, um, and and see a big increase in sales um, that you didn't see last year. And the, torpedo, and the torpedo that's coming that nobody knows is regulation, for sure. It's going to come some way or another, and yeah. uh, but we still don't know what it is. And nobody we got a lawyer in the room still, right? So <laughs> she can help with that. So. Yeah. From the audience, um, please, we've got microphones here. I want to make sure that we, with a panel of three, you, you only have a couple minutes each for each question, but if there's some very specific questions that you have, an area that you, know, you want to touch on that we've already touched on, please. Anybody? Dave, did you have, I know that we were talking a little bit, so. Yeah, um, from, a, from a B2B and a B2C perspective, we hear from the digital folks about fraud and fraud prevention, and that's usually because consumers go to a site, they buy a card, you take a credit card number, you're effectively transferring $100 from your Visa or MasterCard or American Express onto a prepaid product. Um, so that's a little bit different on the on the B2B side where do you I mean we're all talking about this is the next thing this is the this is the part of the business that's going to exponentially grow um, not the gifting side necessarily as as much as the the B2B side so how do you see your role because it is more complex in a B2B scenario where maybe a customer uh, cashes points in and gets three cards and maybe there are three cards that you carry or don't carry. So how, how are you going to manage this expectation in the B2B side? Perhaps you can do, sort of address that versus the B2C side, which is you know, pretty simple. I don't mean to understate, but it's, it's different. I, I, I can take that. Yeah. Or, or why don't I start, and then you guys yeah. can add on. I, I think the value to the on the B2C side is the fraud protection and the the experience the consumer's getting, the way the card's being delivered, the way the card's being viewed. There's a lot of that value there that partners add. Um, on, the B2B, on the B2B side, um, when someone's buying a lot of cards, the data becomes more important. So they want something elegant to log into, something to be able to see um, how the consumers are interacting with the cards. And I think with specifically digital, um, there's, a, there's a wealth of data there. Um, so the, the, a good value piece that digital gives to the B2B guys um, is that data and how do they get that data and is the data the same for one brand uh, versus another. Um, but the data becomes way more important, um, at least that, that's um, what's, what's from our perspective. Yeah, and, and I always think that digital, it's a matter of convenience, right? So you're giving your clients convenience. If somebody wants a physical card, you can choose to receive a physical card. If you want a digital card, you can choose to receive that. If you want a mobile card, you can choose to receive that. Or in the case of receiving the three, di di the three different cards, you can actually choose to, to receive one is digital, one is mobile, one is uh, physical. So digital delivery is not about cannibalization of physical card sales it's about it's it, it's a complement to that kind of uh, activity so from a B2B perspective, um, we've really seen three different types of, of B2B type relationships. One are those relationships or those, or those companies that go out there and say, hey, uh, we love your brand, we want a gift either for the holidays or as rewards to our employees, that, and, and how do we enable that, right? So there's, there's a way to do that. There's also um, those companies like our banking companies that say, hey, let us exchange the points for gift cards and, and things of that nature. Um, so that's another big component of that. And then there are partners out there who specifically focus on putting Salesforce on the streets to go out there and sell your gift cards into those company type benefits, right? It's your 15 year anniversary and, and you want $1,000 at Tim Hortons, for example, as opposed to the um, watercolor picture frame, things of that nature, right? So from a B2B perspective, those are the three channels that we see um, and help enable for our merchants. In the perfect world, and this is probably something that our, a, a lot of, of our merchants um, need a little bit help 
recognizing or coming to terms with is when it comes to prepaid in general, a perfectly balanced perf portfolio is split into three groups. You have your in-store, which includes your online. That's just a separate store for you. You have your aggregator relationships, and then you have your B2B sales. Um, any At any point in time when one of those three segments becomes a lot bigger than the other two segments, your portfolio is out of balance, and it puts you in a position where you might be losing some negotiation power. Um, with the only exception being that if the bigger component is in store, if, if that's the case, then you're doing something very, very right. Uh, but that's usually not the case. Great. Other questions from the audience? Is a real, there, got it. see, thank you, Don. <laughs> Felipe, I just wanted to know if you thought that um, on the gifting side, on for B2C on mobile, um, I agree with, with your comment, and I wondered if you thought that um, a value proposition back to the customer, either in the form of discount or a benefit, uh, would incent me as a consumer to gift or purchase a gift card for self-use from the Gap, for instance, on my phone, if it meant that I got a 10% discount from buying it through that channel. Yeah, sure. And 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 thank you for that on it. it. Yeah, definitely. Because, again, if you go from transaction to deployment to redemption, and then to how do we tie everything together? That's where, and that's what Gary Schwartz is going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, if you can use the data effectively, so if you're targeting your audience effectively, if, if you know that I'm, I am a person that I'm going to use the phone, I'm going to value using the phone as a, as a means to give, and I'm gifting so, something that can actually be redeemed at the store level, I will value that. But you got to know it's me, you got to have the data to know it's me, you being the merchant, and you got to give the option because I might not. I might be this way, but you might want to give to my brother, and he might not value that. Or I might value a brand that has a has the potential to redeem the cards at the point of sale with a mobile phone, be that with NFC, be that with a barcode. Or I might value a brand that doesn't have the capability. So it's all about the convenience. So that's why I was saying there's no silver bullet again. You have to target to your uh, to the end audience and use the data that you're collecting for that for that it's very important again the discussions need to happen before so when you are building your program as as we were talking before you are building the program based on uh, a, a, a balanced portfolio and I couldn't agree more, more more with you on that and based on the end consumer every time we talk about this we got to always be thinking about the consumer Again, if we talk too much about the technology, less about the user experience. Mm -hmm. And we need to focus on the consumer, how the consumer is going to use, and the best consumer is yourself. Think about how do you want to use this? This is the best way of doing it. it it's so key to a successful program to communicate to them effectively. Um, we have partners that put gift, uh, digital cards on their website and have a button and it's available and they do well. And then we have partners that promote it and engage with their consumers and say, hey, if today between one and three, you buy a gift card, you're going to get an extra $50. And we have partners that have three locations and they'll outsell a, a huge, like they'll outsell a big, big brand in those three hours, like exponentially. Um, and what that tells us is consumers want that engagement. And if, if you put yourself in their shoes, um, imagine you follow a brand and they send you an email and they say right now, between this time and this time, if you buy a gift card, you're going to get this? I'd do that. I do, right? So it ends up working just so well. And you don't want to spam them and you don't want to you know, be a, a, a nuisance to them. But if you, can, if, you know they're, if you know what they're looking for and you effectively communicate with them, um, digital gift cards give such a, a, such, it's such a nice vehicle to, to, to facilitate that. Sorry. Yeah. So then, it, when we're, ta we're talking digital, but then do you think that that builds the case or helps the case for mobile purchase and storing of gift cards for self-use on my phone? Like, so digital I get, but on the actual, like when we're talking about me going onto my phone and purchasing a gift card that I'm going to use, to the example that you gave. Let me give you a uh, response that based on real fact. So uh, today, and. This is a very high technology thing with my remember. 
my sticky note to remember the passcode. <laughs> so Sorry, this what's, what's is, the password? Uh, okay. I can't. Okay, my, don't tell. I can't read my chicken scratch. So. Yeah, don't tell us. The, so on SureTap today, you can go in, and so SureTap is Rogers Wallet. You can go in and you can use your Rogers credit card. You can use your Rogers prepaid card. That's our product. And you can use gift cards that are on the short tab. The, the problem of using the gift cards that are there for gifting today, again, is you cannot, the key benefit of short tab today is that you can actually use as a proximity device or you can display a barcode for, for people to, to purchase. The gift cards that are available there, not all of them have the capability. So you are gifting something to somebody that is going to be a hassle to redeem. It has to be, it has to be, um, the word is something that I can never pronounce, but I'll try. Ubiquity. Ubiquitous. Thank you. I told you I was going to put your words in But that was really good. We did that all at the same time. Yeah. So it got to be that, okay? You got to be able. <laughs> Come on, we want to hear it. Yeah, impossible. <laughs> that and scroll. In, in, in Spanish then, Portuguese. Horrible. It's yeah, okay. Horrible. So, but okay. <laughs> you have to be able to, you, you have to be able to give to somebody and somebody has to be able to use it in a very elegant way. If it's not, it's, it's going to fail, right? The, the experience at the end consumer is going to be bad. So. I think gifting is possible, provided that it's the, and it's possible today to some brands, not to all brands. Yeah. So we gotta be careful when we're saying, I'm gonna put a gift on a mobile card and it's everybody's gonna be happy. No, it's not everybody. The technology is there, yes. SureTap does that. We build the platform for, for everything, not only for prepaid open loop, but prepaid closed loop, so the technology is there. It's not, but it's not for everybody yet. Yeah. I think that's the mess. Another thing too is people like playing on their phones, right? You send them something that looks nice, and it, if it works well, and you give them the ability to reload and, and engage with it, um, they will, right? But the challenge is, is it needs to go into a nice looking wallet or app where they can reload, um, and also when they go to use it, if it's a bad experience, then they're not going to do that, right? But if it's a really neat experience, um, and they can reload, um, you will get a percentage of people that will love it. If a month if a month goes by without me getting on the phone and a client saying I want what Starbucks has, <laughs> honestly, it's been too long. Um, because that's uh, honestly that's that's what we all hear at least on the first data side because they know that we're their partners. Um, but when you start to dive into um, you know, here are some of the things you need to do to be able to align your strategy. You know, first thing you say is okay. To be a Starbucks, you have to be laser sharp with respect to what your strategy is. And that usually takes, you know, sitting back and saying, what does I, our ideal customer do? How many times do they come in a day, a week, you know, depending on vertical, a month? Um, what are their what are their spend behaviors? What are their what are they buying? Um, what is their payment method payment method of payment right their preferred method of payment and and when you start diving into these types of questions with merchants they start saying oh well we don't want them to only use prepaid we want them to be able to start you know use any method of payment and so that that vision of being the starbucks starts to slowly crumble right because again you don't have that laser sharp focus on what is the behavior that you want when you look at your perfect customer what do they do for you and your business and then you build a strategy around that. What, what does your strategy need to contain in order to incent, reward, and continue to develop that behavior towards that ideal customer and, and what they do for your business. I, I can pretty much guarantee you that Tim Hortons does not say I want to be Starbucks. No. <laughs> Other than that, I'm yeah. sure that a lot of people do. That's so right. I, I That's did right. promise everybody that we would stay on time and Dave, That's I think right. we've got a couple minutes. Okay. Right. So did you have another question or just? I, I did if nobody else does, but I'm happy to throw it to the floor. Paul? 
By the way, we did agree before that Dave, Felipe, and I would make three great panelists. Yeah. So uh, we might, maybe next year, okay? <laughs> three bald students. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope you can excuse me for this is a little less of a question, but I could spin it as a question and say, what do you think about what I'm about to say? Uh-oh. Um, so I guess this is more of a, a merchant perspective because there's no merchants on the panel. And I think the general consensus was the redemption side is the key. And um, I guess from an ESO perspective, what we noticed, and I think it goes before the, the redemption, which is the business case. And one of the challenges that we faced is cost millions of dollars to be able to deploy digital product. And in order to spend that kind of money, you have to have a great business case. And we all know that from our perspective, uh, it's going to be a tough challenge for the first couple of years trying to get the plane to take off. There won't be that many redemptions at the beginning. Um, we're not a highly addictive sub substance like Starbucks or Tim Hortons, so it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, but we, we still have visits that are once a week. And from some of the, uh, I guess, other gift card companies, the visits are less frequent than once a week. So it'd be very difficult to create that business case. And uh, I guess the question is, what do you think about, from a merchant perspective, I know you're not merchants, what feedback have you heard from other merchants as far as their challenges even into entering the space, to creating the business case? Uh, I mean, ESO's perspective is we've got 2,000 locations, we've got 50,000 plus employees. It's a training issue, it's a hardware issue, it's a business case issue, and there's a lot of things around it. Even before you say, this is a redemption, the, the secret sauce is how do we get the redemption? Before we even get there, there's about 12 other issues that need to get resolved. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and Paul, what, what I would say is ask refer like speak to others that have done it. Um, we, we run into that challenge all the time where it's, is this a business case? Like, are we going to sell more gift cards or are we going to sell less or are we gonna just going to cannibalize the cards we already sell? And um, we've never lost a client to date. And when you look at digital, it is new, new customers. Um, so what I would say, if you are trying to build a business case, um, talk to other peers and events like this is great for, for this kind of, you know, these, these t kinds of conversations. Um, and, and I'm sure they'll be happy to share with you um, how much of a growth some adding like some, a product like digital or, or other products give to you. Um, and that might help it on a percentage basis say, hey, if it's going to increase my gift card sales by X percentage, um, maybe it's worth doing those additional kind of, kind of points. But I think that also goes to what type of merchant do you are? In the case of ASO specifically, it's not about just the POS at the convenience store. You have to change the entire pump system to be able to accept a certain type of payment. You have to, again, it goes back to uh, the willingness and, and the strategy where we were talking before. If the strategy is to accept that kind of product, is to have that kind of product so that others can use at ASO stations, then it's a... Uh, it, 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 it's a matter of thinking which, which target audience are you focusing on, if there's an ROI for that, what is the ROI for that in the future, but that is, again, that is not a silver bullet. I don't think that today you can say that, yeah, mobile is going to be the best thing ever for ESO. It makes sense because you normally have your, your phone in, and right now, in theory, you could safely use the phone to pay at the pump. However, we have been told for many years that you should not use your phone at the pump. So do you really want to invest the marketing, the dollar, and the training to do that kind of stuff? Does that make sense for us? Or perhaps not, unless you want to invest that. But does it make sense to have a digital product that you can redeem at the convenience store? Perhaps yes. And then where you direct your marketing efforts. Again, it goes back to the strategy. At, at, at the beginning, sorry, I'm taking too long. Okay. It, it, it takes back to the strategy at the beginning, but I don't think that at this point there is going to be an ROI, a clear ROI for that. And that's why I was saying before, the risk, one of the risks is the business getting frustrated and trying to find the solution and then just say, I'm not going to do it anymore, I'm going to wait. Or. Yeah, I don't mean to isolate ESO as, <laughs> right. as the uh, possible whether it's, a good, whether it's a proper business case or not. Right. I think that 
uh, if you asked other merchants, yeah. oh, you yeah. could probably paint a broad brush, yeah. and the principles would apply to not just a fuel station that has pumps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we could deploy something that only works inside the station. That, that's a possibility. But it's still a tough business case, right. because at the beginning, there could be one person a week visiting the station, and the person that processed the first transaction might not even remember how to process the next one. And, and I think that, that principle applies to many businesses, yeah. and it doesn't matter whether you have five locations or 2,000. And I guess that, um, in the whole discussion, I didn't see too much discussion about uh, the, the secret sauce of redemption through before you, companies even decide that they want to go down that path. Right. Uh, solid strategy is only so good um, as maybe what you're selling, yes. Right. So that's where coffee really succeeds. But other than coffee type products, it's it's a huge challenge, I think, across the whole industry to make the business case for it. Right. I'm going to tell you what I tell my kids every time they say, I can't do something. You've got to want it. <laughs> so like if you see if, if you but so <laughs> point taken um, so when it comes to developing your strategy part of that strategy is what are our obstacles right um, and if you are the type of location where you're seeing that frequency then you're building a business case around that frequency today right so if they're going in there once a week then then you have no problem justifying the cost of a physical plastic for that card then your mobile strategy isn't so much focused on digital gifting it's so much as taking the digital gift i received and loading it onto my physical card right there are lots of merchants that can sit around all day and come up with a thousand reasons why not to do it um, but there are just as many reasons how to do it um, and and maybe that's a unique perspective because we do get that backseat look and if you really want to play in this space there's somebody out there who's already figured out how to redeem without causing too much um, interference in, in your day-to-day -day processes. I, I think I hear panel part four for next year. So. <laughs> Sorry. So I was just going to say, it, it ties into the strategy, right? And if you know your business, um, which most people do, um, and, and you want people to come in with them because someone else is going to come in with them, then run a promotion, right? So there's different things. And like Dania said, um, someone else is probably in a similar position in that way, and they've probably figured it out. Um, so it is good to have a, a correct strategy and then execute on it. And like Dania said, you have to want it. Because if, if if you want it, you will do those things. Um, yeah. We got a playground and kids reference. Sorry, Dave, go we ahead. To, we have to wrap, but um, you know, part of what I do is I watch people in the audience and I see them wrenching their hands and heads flailing back and forth. So I've got to call somebody out in a minute and they may slap me later or say <laughs> no, they don't want you, it. They're going to slap you, not me. <laughs> um, well, we all look alike, so maybe they'll slap you later. <laughs> um, First of all, to, to, to Paul's point, um, I think beyond gift cards, I think it's fair to say that the digital strategy isn't about gift cards. Gift cards is a byproduct of a digital strategy for an organization. Yeah. So the byproduct of that is you'll be able to deploy that. Then the question becomes, do you buy it or build it? Yep. And there's a strategy and a deployment that has to happen within the organization. Yep. Am, I, am I on the same line as you, Paul? It's not just about the gift card. It's about the whole strategy that you need to be able to... Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, it, which is a, a fair point and one we're not going to solve today, uh, but, it's, but it's one that we're going to need to solve as a digital strategy to be able to deploy these opportunities, which brings us into prepaid and gift. Um, that said, I think there's a great social message that Maybe Louis could put up there with maybe a contest on how not to blow yourself up when you're filling up your gas tank <laughs> with your cell phone because you're not allowed to use it. It would be fun to see that. No, or not. Um, I was looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, and I did see somebody over here beside Susan um, flailing a little bit. And uh, I'll call you. I don't know you, so I can call you out. But you Gail, don't have to respond. Up. But it looks like you had an opinion. Would you like to share it? Okay, but and would you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Yonatan, and I'm currently, up, maybe up until I answer this question, <laughs> work with Tim Hortons. And, um, Sorry, where? <laughs> Starbucks. Tim Hortons. The Sorry, yeah. brand Canadians love most. Got it. Um, and I was flailing because I thought you asked a brilliant question, and 
Mateus, I thought you should have answered that question <laughs> because, um, well, because we're about to issue an RFP and you're one of the <laughs> participating companies, <laughs> and <laughs> I, I wanted to keep and, and I'm totally going to want to see yeah. your answer on that yeah. one um, <laughs> wow. because I think uh, we would love to know what the industry thinks or what the industry observes um, when a company launches digital gift cards versus their plastic sales. And you said it's all new. Uh, and we should ask our peers, but you would have the best insight into the trends in the industry. So maybe yeah, you could comment and, and, on that yeah, if yeah, I didn't I, put you on the spot yeah, too bad. No, I, I'd love to, Gail, and uh, with permissions of, of other brands, but maybe I could connect you with, with some. Um, but it, it, from a high level, it looks like this. Plastic, people like plastic. Plastic does well until the 6th, 15th of December, and then digital just kicks butt, right? And if you augment it with a promotion, it does more than that. Um, but your consumers want plastic, um, but just like they want plastic, they want digital. And when when you launch a digital program and you have the data, you'll see that, holy smokes, like we were missing out because between the 16th of December and the 24th, that was a big portion of our online gift card sales in the entire year, um, or it was a big portion of the overall gift card program in general. Um, yeah, so, so what I would say, what, to specifically answer your question, um, you're going to pick up a lot of additional customers um, between that, the, the, the days leading up to holidays, um, and you'll be able to see and track and see how does this customer behave? And is it a good customer of ours? Um, and you, you, they, they typically are good customers. But um, to, to further add to that, I'd love to connect you with other brands um, because some brands do run promotions and they do really analyze the data, um, and they can they know exactly what what's additional um, and 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 how, how how much it reoccurs every year. Yeah. And that wasn't an official RFP response, no. by the way. That was, yeah. It was an unofficial response, and as long as it doesn't input uh, impact throughput at Tim Hortons. It, it is so. recorded, so it's... <laughs> that was a wild card, huh? That was a complete yeah, wild that card. That was a good was Gail, good. thank you. And I owe you a glass of wine. And I'm, I'm that guy right there when you're looking to slap me later yeah. if that's the case. <laughs> she knows uh, who I am, so, so it's I'll, okay. Steve, I'll let you wrap it up. Yeah, so listen, I just want to thank everybody. We I got very excited when we were led down to the bar before by LA and then very disappointed when there was no booze. So I know that there's a networking session. Uh, everybody on the panel, Felipe, Matthias, and Dania, I want to thank you very much. I know we were supposed to have a fourth who unfortunately could not make it. Great topic. I assume there's going to be part four, Dave. There's going to be some follow-up, and please watch your inboxes and emails from Dave and the team as far as information. And I hope it was helpful for everybody, uh, and the panelists are all here for the afternoon, correct? Yeah. Um, so if you have any follow-up questions, uh, please feel free to ask. So thank you for having us, and uh, have a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.